Hi everyone, this is Sharon from Self Care for Black Men and Aaron from, or shall I say Mr. Let Go will be joining us soon and we're going to be talking about the five love language. I'm just waiting for him to get on and for other people to join. And I appreciate everyone listening. And if you're not on this live, most definitely check out the replay when it comes to it. And also to let everyone know, uh, with Self Care for Black Men, uh, one of the things that I do when I start off live, I like to start off with a breathing exercise because, um, again, part of it is us. Uh, everyone you know taking care of ourselves and a lot of time with this world we're on the go 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 and we're you know sometimes exiting a meeting going right into the meeting and we kind of have that energy or something on our mind and things like that and so um i like to start off with a uh, just a brief um, breathing exercise just to get us set in and again, I'm just waiting for the guests to come on. And I appreciate those who are here already. And again, we're going to be talking about the five love language and um, with Aaron, he has a very unique way of explaining it. I've heard it explained it before. I've never heard it explained it that way. And so you guys are in for a treat as soon as he gets on. And I hope that everyone is doing well, wherever you are in the world. I'm on the East Coast here. And so, so far my morning has been okay. And I'm still waiting for my guests. Okay, I see Mr. Let Go. Let's see. Hey, Hello. Hey. How are you? Good, good, good. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Well, again, I really do appreciate you coming on this morning to talk about uh, and, um, and again, everybody, um, my name is Karen with Self Care for Black Men, and one of the things I do is just try to have different information and different self care modalities and practices. Um, one of the things that I do too is when I do these lives, I try to start off just with a brief. Um, breathing exercises because one of the things that I feel like in our society we're always on the go 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 um, our society is kind of built on this uh, you know uh, fight fight flight freeze and we need to kind of turn it off and so sometimes we enter into meetings or have things on our mind so I just want to Really, just take a moment just to have just five deep breaths. So, if um, you can do it with your eyes closed, you can do it um, with your eyes open, whichever way. So, let's just take a deep breath here. And then from there, just count five breaths.
And then one last deep breath. Lay open your eyes. And just, again, it's just a way to get your focus. And I kind of call it erase whatever you kind of come in with. Because sometimes you just never know what room or, you know, where people kind of off. But anyway, everyone, we have Aaron Mallory. He's Mr. Let Go. I follow him on Instagram. And he has lots of good uh, conversations, and I learned a lot from you as well, because there have been some things you put on there, and I'm like, hmm, have I done that? <laughs> you, mean, you know, some good insight and a lot of, you know, you have a lot of good material out there. Um, but one thing in particular, I saw you talk about the five love language, and I have never ever seen her anybody talk about the five love language the way that you break it down and I know a lot of people are familiar with that so I want you to explain it the way that you do <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> go from there because the way you talk about it I I think it'll give people a different perspective because a lot of times people may just think about the five love language. Oh, well, I know what mine is. And they may know what the other person is, but they may not really know how it impacts each person, not just on the individual level, but inside their mind, inside their body, just within mm -hmm. themselves. So I guess tell a little bit about yourself before you get started as well. Okay, well, first of all, my name is Aaron Mallory, a.k.a. Mr. Underscore Let Go on Instagram. And I literally study as much as I can in so many different facets in order to help people let go of what is no longer serving their best interest. Because a lot of people, sadly, they spend so much time being attached to their past, they're being attached to their upbringing and they don't necessarily know how to unattach themselves from so many things in their lives and a lot of people are trapped. So I started studying the brain and I found out a lot of different things are literally attachment problems. They're not common sense problems. They're literally the simple fact, like, it's just like being a, um, attached to a drug or an eating disorder, you know? So it's like some of us have attachment disorders. So that's what I do. I teach people how to let go. And understanding self, like the love languages, is one of the biggest parts of learning how to unattach yourself from the things that don't serve you any purpose anymore. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I guess in putting it in that sense, we do have attachment disorder to things, and we don't even understand why. And like you said, when it comes to the biology, because, you know, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and the way that I've been trained, it's a good training, but I just say there are some holes there. And now I'm learning. I just say I'm catching up, and I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though we've always said the biopsychosocial, spiritual, and all of that, but there are some things that have really been left out and that biology really has, and it, it, it really shows. So let's definitely the five love language. Cause I just love the way <laughs> you explain it. Okay. So uh, first let's list them real quick. Okay. So the five love languages are quality time, receiving gifts, Acts of service, physical touch. Uh, darn. What are, what are the other three? Darn. I almost got them. Let me hold on. That's okay. You got quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, physical touch. Give me a words, second. Give me a second. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. I thought I had all of them. And you already said acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Okay, so I got it. Okay, okay, I was just missing one of them. Okay, so 
the bottom line is the reason for these particular love languages are simply this understanding what it is that you need. Like yesterday, I was just talking to my daughter. She has a boyfriend, right? And the first thing I asked her was, what makes you happy? And she started to draw a blank. And I'm sitting here looking at her like, you don't know what makes you happy? And she said, I never thought about it. And this is not just her problem. This is a lot of our problems. Mm -hmm. We just go through life just running around trying to make other people happy. You know, um, whether it's our friends or whether it's a mate or whether it's our parents. A lot of people go to college simply because their parents wanted them to go to college. A lot of people, you know, uh, go in this direction in life because their parents want them to go through that, you know, go in that direction or because their parents did it or something, you know, a police officer, somebody who went to the military. Uh, teacher, they say, you know, they, they want their kid to, to be like them, you know, and the kid is just spending a lot of time just appeasing their parent. You know, people uh, spend a lot of time, a lot of time appeasing their friends when they're young. You know, there are a, lot of, a lot of guys, I actually talk to um, men in, in, in prison, right? And a lot of guys are in prison simply because they were trying to gain validation or please their friends or their gang members, you know, associates, you know? And of course, of course, people spend so many years and so much energy trying to please their mates. You know, they're running around just that they're, they're, they're killing themselves just trying to hold on to the person that they're, 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 gotten uh, themselves attached to and they don't know how to let go. So that is one of the biggest problems in our lives. And I think if I can teach the world how to let go, I think it would, it would be less diseases because a lot of diseases come, well, they start, they don't come from, but they start from stress. Yeah. Because the second you get stressed, the second you get upset, the second you get frustrated, cortisol, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, starts to drip into your bloodstream. And cortisol is not meant to continually drip into your bloodstream for weeks and months. It's supposed to drip into your bloodstream. It's kind of like adrenaline, you know? Once you get adrenaline, you, the, the adrenaline is meant to get you out of a situation, and then it goes away. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that when it comes to stress, is people hear about it, but people don't really see the connection of how stress leads down to heart disease, high blood pressure, and even diabetes, and even sometimes some mm -hmm. cancer and things like that. They just think it's just something that's B. But if we're not taking care of ourselves, then more so – the way that we think, and as you say, these attachments that we haven't learned to be able to identify and mm -hmm. how to, quote, let go of things without, because um, I kind of feel like our society hasn't taught us, it's kind of like the feelings that come up, because we're thinking we're hurting somebody's feelings if we say no. It's like mm -hmm. we, we never learn how to say no and how to receive no. And had to sit in there and say, this doesn't feel good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that feeling is going to dissipate. It's going to go away. It's not going to last yeah. forever. You know? Do you realize that a lot of us, um, we were taught not to say no by our parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of us, we, we're taught to love everybody but ourselves by our parents. You know, there's a lot of people who have been say, go, go hug your uncle. Go, go, yeah. go tell your auntie, go, go do this. Do you know, but nobody ever tells you how to, to love yourself, you know, how, how to find out more about yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So you spend literally your entire life trying to make others happy, but you have no idea what makes you happy. Yeah, I mean. You're absolutely right, because I can remember, because like I'm an older sibling, I have a younger brother, and I can mm -hmm. remember 
I mean, we're just like a year and a half, two years apart, but it's like being the oldest, they want you to share. But what if I don't want to share? You know mm. what I'm saying? Or do you make my brother share with me? You know what I'm saying? But usually right. when you get with kids, if you watch them long enough, they will eventually share on their own. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But we don't let them, we make them. And then same thing happens in school. You know, it's yeah. kind of like you gotta yeah. share and you don't allow people to do it on their own, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. So let's go into the love languages and let's get a better understanding of ourselves real quick. So say me and you are in a relationship together, right? And for whatever reason, there's a lack of communication and you're angry with me, but you don't know how to necessarily articulate what your frustration is with me. And I have a problem with you, but I don't necessarily know how to articulate my problems I have with you. Okay? So, say your love languages, your love language, your two primary love languages, I'll just pick two for yourself. Yeah, pretty much mine is um, is um, physical touch and it's not echo service. Oh, what's the other one? I forgot. Physical uh, in time. Time. Okay, so you like quality time and physical touch, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. My primary love languages are acts of service and to make it interesting, let's say words of affirmation, right? Okay. But we don't know this. Mm-hmm. We don't know this. We just feel it, right? So they, we don't know how to articulate it or anything, right? So mm-hmm. next thing you know, because of how I grew up, my mom wasn't the touchy-feely person. My mom didn't give me hugs, right? So I'm not necessarily, we're just using this as an example. I'm not necessarily the type of person that gives physical touch, right? So I'm not as, a, as affectionate as you want me to be. We're just having sex or doing this and now doing that. But every time you reach out and want to hold my hand, you know, intimacy, right? Uh, you want me to hold you. Uh, you want to lay on me when we're looking at TV. I'm like, yo, it's hot. I don't, don't want to do that. You know, mm-hmm. and now you're frustrated, mm-hmm. but you don't know why you're frustrated. Right. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, but on my end, my mom always told me how much she loved me. She always told she always said, you're a king. She always told me like, oh, you're a good boy, or you're this, you're that, you're so awesome, right, growing up. But now I'm with you, and you barely ever tell me anything that makes me feel good, Mm -hmm. you know? So what ends up happening is you're frustrated with me for reasons unknown, and I'm frustrated with you for reasons unknown. Mm -hmm. And these two things right here are literally just one of the love languages that we require. So your other one is time, right? Mm -hmm. So mine is the first one, of course, is words of affirmation. So I'm I'm, I'm like, babe, you looking so good. You're because a lot of times the person that has a love language, they express that same love language, right? So I'm like, Sharon, you looking so good today. Uh, you're so smart. You're so this. You're this. You're that. And you feel good about it, right? But I'm sitting there like, why doesn't she say this back to me? Like, am I looking good? Like, you know, do, do you like my beard? Do you like my outfit? Like, and it's and it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating me, right? But on your end, I'm thinking that I'm doing everything possible for you because I'm giving you words of affirmation. I'm making you feel good about yourself. But guess what? I'm not giving you any time because I'm always at work. Mm -hmm. So not only am I not giving you intimacy, I'm not giving you the time that you need either because I'm always at work. And when I'm when I'm off work, I want to I want to be in my man cave. You know, what I mean, or you can come around me, but I'm not touchy feely. And you feel like you're not being loved. Mm hmm. And one day you blow up and you're like, you know what? You don't love me. 
And I'm like, well, you don't love me. What are you talking about? Yeah. And you're like, you don't spend any time with me. And you're like, what are you talking? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I give you all the love I can. I tell you how beautiful you are. I tell you how smart you are. Do you ever say that to me? No. So you saying I don't love you and I don't spend any time with you. But guess what? I don't think you believe in me. Mm -hmm. And you look at me like, what are you talking about? I believe in you. Well, I can't tell. And since we don't necessarily know about the five love languages, we're not aware of what our five love languages are. And we're not aware of what the other person's love languages are, we're looking at each other like we're crazy. Mm -hmm. Both of us. Because I'm sitting here trying to prove to you that I do love you because I'm expressing my particular love language, and you're trying to prove to me how much you love me because you're expressing your particular love language to me. But we're not being receptive to those because we don't want those love languages. We want mm -hmm. our love languages. That's true. So the way to, and this is a lot of arguments and a lot of relationships. I think I may do another video about this because I think it can help a lot of people. So sadly, there are a lot of women who aren't a touchy-feely person because <laughs> there's something called a fear of intimacy. One in every five women statistically have been raped, abused, or assaulted physically by someone that they actually know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that have changed in their in their in their brain chemistry is mm -hmm. they don't necessarily want intimacy. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see that one of your love language what love languages is physical touch. Been in a lot of situations, sadly, the woman can be the person who isn't as intimate as the man, you know? Mm -hmm. And this could turn around and cause a dude to feel like he's unloved. But at the end of the day, just like I talk about letting go, that woman or man they are not aware of the fact that they have a certain amount of trauma or a certain amount of uh, issues from their upbringing that they have not let go of. Mm -hmm. So they, they're not able to allow their love language or allow a person in and be just, just receptive to something as simple as physical touch. Yeah, because a lot of stuff can be on a subconscious level, you know, mm -hmm. well. because even like for me, physical touch is my love language. But then at the same time, I did have a me too at the age of five. And I mm. think that without knowing it, I mean, I see it now, but I didn't know it then. But let's just say I may like sex in a certain way. You know mm. what I'm saying? So on an unconscious level, not knowing that, and it's kind of like, well, how come we can't do it this way? And so that did, you know, have some friction in there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, so so what kind of going back to your point, that can be true where um, just a lot of stuff can be going on with us on a subconscious level, and we don't even know it. You, you know what I'm Facts. saying? Um, mm -hmm. or either, um, I know that um, guys have told me to relax. I'm like, oh, I'm relaxing. This feels good. What are you talking about? But mm -hmm. they can feel the attention. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't feel it. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. So that's good to know. I mean, even though I'm I'm aware of the five love language, but not connecting all of that together. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so overall, like, um, the, the second love language that I said, um, I had in this particular example was acts of service, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I would do for you is every time you need something from the store, I will bring you some food. I'll come to your job, bring you something for lunch. I would, uh, every time you, uh, like, every time, this is this is an interesting one. Um, 
every time something is needed around the house, I would fix. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this is this is a this is a funny story, real quick. I actually dated a woman who had a love language of acts of service. And of course, she didn't know how to articulate it, right? So we would date, and every time I came over her house, she would, in some type of way, um, allude to the fact that she needed something fixed, right? Okay. But yeah. I'm not necessarily an acts of service person. I'm just using acts of service as an example, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's not necessarily my love language, but it's her love language, right? Mm -hmm. So at one point, uh, when we were like breaking up, you know, that's when everything starts to come out, right? And she said, Aaron, do you realize every time you came over, you we sat down, we sat down and watched a TV that was like sitting on the mantle and not put up. You know how you put the TV up on a on a on a you know, and it was just sitting there. It wasn't up. And she was like do you realize how long we went looking at that TV and not one time did you say, did you say, you know what, let me put this TV up and let me get the brackets and, and do this and do that. And I'm looking at her like, Oh, you wanted me to do that? Of course. And I'm thinking like, well, why didn't you say it? This is your house. I'm not going to come in your house and, and start telling you what to do with your stuff. I thought that's how you want it. Mm -hmm. But subconsciously that was love her love language was acts of service and one of the reasons why we weren't working out was and she kept getting frustrated off of things and i'm looking at her like what's wrong with you you get what i'm saying because she didn't know how to articulate her love language so yeah. sometimes a man's love language is words of affirmation and whether it's doing sex or whether he's doing this and doing that, he wants to hear that he's the man. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're the best. You're, you're my, you're the best man I've been with. You're this, you're that. Da, da, da. And a woman isn't saying that. And a guy doesn't necessarily feel like that. And yeah. not to put, and not to put cheating in it, you know, because I don't ever want to excuse cheating, but sometimes a man may actually cheat simply because he wants or is used to a woman telling him that he's the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it could be something that small. You're not expressing how you feel about the man verbally. And next day, you know, he's all doing stupid stuff. And you're like, oh, my God, all men are dogs. You know, not saying cheating is right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes things can be that small and minuscule where you can actually fix something instantly by saying, you know what, you're, you're, you're awesome. You're, you're this, you look so good today. You're, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. And by you saying that too, it kind of reminds me, uh, cause I know I've heard people say, it's like, none of us are mind readers. So mm. it's like everybody is like, well, you ought to know that, you know, cause mm -hmm. like the woman was Isn't saying that crazy. That. She didn't express it, so how are you to know? It's like each person is thinking, like, well, I'm giving you all these signs, but couples tend to do that. And one thing that I've learned, even in relationships, you know, is like we may, like women, we may accuse guys of not being verbal, but when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? We don't, you know, even though women are expressive, but at the same time, mm. we don't express everything that comes to our mind is like you know i really don't like it when you did that it made me feel such and such such or i love when you did that or if something mm -hmm. is bothering us you know like to create those safe spaces where you can have those conversations mm -hmm. both both of us do it men and we women. fall off yeah yeah and, yeah. yeah and one side there's different sides of communication you know, a lot of times a woman may feel like she's expressing herself, mm -hmm. but she's not communicating just because yeah. you're expressing yourself. You know, it doesn't mean that you're communicating, you know, because if I stub my toe, expressing myself is like, damn it. Ah, you know, but I can go to the doctor and not communicate. 
the fact that I feel like I have a broken bone in my toe. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's two different things. You, one, you can say, ouch. And the other thing you can say, I still have a lingering uh, 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 problem in my toe. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, there's different ways of communicating. And a lot of times men as well as women, they don't necessarily communicate to the other person the proper things, but they keep, they say stuff. Mm -hmm. And they think they're communicating, but not they're not really articulating things in a proper manner. Yeah, yeah. Because like so, you say, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, like you say, a, a lot of women may feel like they're they're good at communicating. But at the end of the day, um, they, they feel like a man should know this and should know that and should, you know. And the thing about it is. We have to find out how the other person communicates. You know, you know, if you if you if you say you're cold, that may not that may be you telling me that I you want me to hold you. But I would hear that you're cold and I will go turn the heat up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's important for you to simply say, I want you to hold me. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. In the in the movie uh White Men Can't Jump. I don't know if you remember that movie. Yeah. Um the guy and his girlfriend they were in they were in the bed and she said I'm thirsty. And he jumped up and went and got her a cup of water. He comes back with the water and she's like, "What are you doing?" Mm -hmm. and he said, "What are you talking about? You said you're thirsty." And she said, "I don't that doesn't mean I want a cup of water." Mm -hmm. He's like, what are you talking about? You get what I'm saying? And it was just one of those scenes that really had me laughing because I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, see, women are women are nuts. I don't understand women. Like, I could see that happening in my life. You know what I mean? But sometimes a woman would, would just expect a man to know what what she's saying is meaning instead of just articulating what she actually says or wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was uh, someone had asked a question earlier, and the question mm -hmm. was, when is a good time to tell someone your love language in a relationship? Mm. Did you want to answer that? Or you want me to answer that? We both can answer, but you can go first. Okay. Um, I would say I would go a little farther also. I would say on the first or second date. Mm -hmm. And you can easily make it a game because you can find out what their parents love languages are also because mm -hmm. this is when you find out what a person's parents love languages are this will give you a good indication of what happened to them when they were young right mm -hmm. or what they went through so let's act like we're on a let's act like we're on a date real quick right so, and, and be honest with your, with your, your past or whatever. All right. So we're sitting down talking, right? And I say, yo, Sharon, what's your love languages? Um, quality time and physical touch. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, do you know, what were your parents love? What do you think your parents love languages were? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Because you know, I didn't grow up with my uh, my dad, and then with my mom. Wait, stop! Stop right there! Stop right there! Stop right there! You see what I just learned? Yeah. You were not raised by your mom. Boom. Well, that's I, a I, I huge. Mean, I wasn't raised okay. By my dad. I wasn't raised. Yeah. By my dad. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. But that's a huge part of who you actually are, and I just learned that in five seconds. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. You weren't raised by your mom. No, go ahead about your uh, your upbringing. Yeah, I wasn't raised by my dad, and with my mom, um, actually, um, she did not express a lot of affirmations. Mm, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of us we don't know what the heck our parents' love languages are, but. Mm. In most cases, we know what our parents' love languages were not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you say your mom did not express words of affirmation, that mm -hmm. shows me that 
that was important to you because you just brought it up. Mm -hmm. So apparently that's one of your needs. So I can put that in my, my mental file cabinet and say, all right, on a normal basis, I want to make sure I tell her how pretty she is and how mm -hmm. smart she is mm -hmm. and how much I appreciate her. Boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get what I'm saying? No, yeah. but. And I would probably say when I think about it, because actually you're making me think. I never thought about this. When I think mm -hmm. about it, I would say her love language is acts of service. Definitely. Mm. She likes doing, because even as adults, I mean, we're adults, and I mean, mm. I like what she does for us. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so I would definitely say that. Okay, what about your dad's? I really don't know because, you know, I know of my dad and I wasn't mm. raised by him. I mean, we had mm. some action, but not mm. enough for me to really know what his love language is. Because even when I was younger and trying to get to know him, I guess you could say he was a barrier. Yeah, there was a barrier. And then so I guess you could say once I saw that, so I, you know, I guess you could say that part of me just like, accepted that and it's like oh mm -hmm. okay I'm doing that so right right i really don't know you know i really don't know what his love language is okay so we're on this date now ask me the same question okay so aaron what is your um you say parents love language mm -hmm. what is your parents love language hmm well my dad he was never in my life so um, I, I don't really know much about him, so I don't know. See, bam, now you know I didn't have my dad in my life. So that gives you some information about me, right? And now with my mom, I know for a fact what my mom's love languages are. They were words of affirmation and they were physical touch because my mom always hugged me and my mom always, like, she was always there for me. You know, she she was available to me and she always uh, told me um, uh, positive things. You know, she, she's like, you're going to be great. You know, you're so smart. You know, you're so handsome. You know, she'll tell you should tell other people that I'm handsome in front of other people. And it would embarrass me or whatever. Yeah. But I most like I most definitely know it was um, actually it was quality time also. But. Um, I think it was uh, yeah, quality time, physical touch, and words of affirmation. Okay. You know, but one of the things that I I wanted from my mom was uh, um, acts of service. Mm -hmm. Every time I ask my mom a question, go look it up. Every time I do this, well, I don't, you know, and she would make me do it. And sometimes I and, and my mom didn't work, and she just sat on the couch every day. I wanted my mom to go out and get a job and, and go out and earn money or whatever and, and, you know, and stuff so I can buy some shoes or, or whatever, but she never did. So part of uh, my upbringing that was lacking was acts of service and gifts because she never bought me nothing. Even on Christmas, I just got like a football and some army men. <laughs> so now we're on this date, right? Yeah, yeah. I I now know about with you that your your dad wasn't a, was around, but he wasn't around, and he yeah. kept this barrier up. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I don't have a barrier up because since I had issues with my dad, I can easily empathize with how you dealt with somebody who was around, but that wasn't or wasn't around. Because my dad wasn't around at all. So I can empathize with you. And now I would make, most likely try to give you some, some feelings that would make you feel like, you know what? He's all the way in. And mm -hmm. he, he, he's not acting like my dad used to act. I'm going to mm -hmm. communicate with you more. I'm going to like hug you more. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, give you whatever it is you need because I know that your dad was the opposite and you did not like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, just a simple um, question about your parents' love languages on your first and second date could reveal so much about a person that you'll feel like you know the person or 
the other person may feel like they know themselves better than they've ever known themselves by this strange person that they just met on the second date. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. And those are conversations that we don't have. Now, one thing that I do know that can happen is that people can know, like each person can know their love language, but because life, you know, you live in, you know, let's say you're in a committed relationship and everybody's kind of doing their thing, but then some kind of way because of life, you know, you're working, you may have different schedules. And again, you still hadn't quite got to the point of of how to, I guess, give the person the love language that they need to receive. You want to receive yours, and you're expecting that. And kind of like what we were talking about earlier, you know, one person may have an attitude or get agitated and stuff because they're not receiving it. But in relationships mm. sometimes, you know, just the miss of living, because because a lot of it is on learning because if you you know if you've been single for a while it's just you but when you yeah. start yeah. hearing it's like okay you know how do you maneuver all of that to where each person can kind of you know give you know the other person the love language that they can receive mhm mm how do how do couples do that <laughs> all it like the five love languages is, is just so easy because you can look at it as a game. You can you can easily say, guess my love language. Mm -hmm. Guess 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 what my two love languages are, right? Mm -hmm. And the other person is like, uh, what are they? And then they, then you look them up, right? And then you look them up and you find out what they are. And then he'll say, hmm, I think the way you do this and the way you do that, I think it's uh, gifts, because you always want me to buy you something, or I think it's uh, quality time because you think I work too much, and then you'll say, well, actually, it's this and this and that, and next thing you know, you just made it a game, and now you put together a plan and say, okay, so now that we know our love languages, how do we be better for each other? And it, it would be nice to like write down your love language <clears throat> and put them on the refrigerator or put them in a closet or put it in on a bathroom mirror to remind the other person that, uh, you know what? I'm working too much. She wants quality time. Let me, let me, let me calm down. Or she wants her words of affirmations. So before I leave, let me, let me tell her something nice, you know, or, babe, I hope you have a good day at work today. Have a good day, you know, certain things like that. Or either um, the words of affirmation may be gifts, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's on the mirror. <clears throat> so you say, all right, before I get home. Or you can have their love languages in your car somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the second I get in my car, before I go home, I can say, all right, let me, I know her love language is gifts. So let me stop at a store and bring her some flowers or let me go buy a little teddy bear or let me go buy this or whatever. Right. Because her love language is gifts or if her love language is quality time. Like I said before, instead of going to the bar or uh, going going here or going over somebody's house, let me come straight home. Mm -hmm. You know, because I have your love languages like somewhere in my car where it reminds me that her love language has to be uh, massaged, you know, mm -hmm. or physical touch. Oh, when I come home, oh, oh yeah, physical touch. When I come home, let me make sure to give her a hug the second I walk in the door, you know? So that's how I would look at it. And, and I think that would help couples immensely because overall we just get so um bogged down with life we just forget stuff yeah yeah and this is true but, and then the thing is if you're not um investing in yourself you know mm -hmm. in, you know self-care and then to be able to pour that into your loved one then that's where this that breakdown in relationship. <clears throat> Looking at some of the comments, and I think this kind of tie into what we just talked about 
um, someone said that some people don't really, um, uh, some people can have toxic love language or all love languages are not so loving. Um, I don't think anything, any love language is toxic. Uh, let's look at the toxicity of something. Uh, let's say physical touch, right? Say my love language is physical touch and I can't keep my hands to myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm on the first date and I'm, 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 I'm all on the small of your back. I'm, I'm, and you're like, oh, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? Like, nah. And you, and he's thinking like, yo, you know, I'm just, just let you know that I, that I care about you. You know, I like, he's like, well, yo, we're on the first date. Like, chill out. You know, I'm, I'm touchy feely or I want to kiss at the end of the night. And next thing you know, you're like, yo, this, this guy's a creep, you know, mm -hmm. or on date number two, um, your love language is time. So you keep texting me and you keep calling me and you're like, um, hey, I want to see you. I want to uh, I want to talk to you. And I'm sitting there like, bro, like not bro, but like, yo, like, calm down. Like, I don't even know you. What? You're, yeah. you're too needy, you know. So to a certain degree, uh, I wouldn't call it toxic, but too much of anything can kill you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes somebody's need for their love language to be met, that person can keep can easily go overboard with it. Or if your love language is gifts and you keep wanting me to buy you stuff and I ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. And you like, why you don't buy me nothing? You're like, you're a gold digger or something? You know what? I ain't, you, you know what? You're a gold digger. I, I ain't got time. You just want me for my money. And you're like, no, I just, I, I just want you to buy me stuff. And my trigger may have me like, you know what? See, these women, they just want me for my money. I'm out of here. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of some love languages can be debilitating, but I wouldn't call them toxic, but I guess that, I guess that could be toxic, but I, I would say debilitating. Yeah. And then uh, someone else has said, um, what if your physical love language is just the intimacy of sex, but not the touches um, out of sound of it? I guess not the touches. I guess it sounds like just sex, That sounds but... like sex and not intimacy. So yeah. physical touch is not necessarily intimacy. I would say time is intimacy. So if your love language is physical touch, that could be hugging sex or, or whatever, you know, but um, that sounds like there was a certain amount of trauma that happened to that particular person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if it's a woman, maybe she, she, she's never uh, uh, hugged. She's never loved. She just have had, has had sex, you know, in her life. She probably was molested or raped or whatever, and she she may like to be choked, but she doesn't like to be hugged. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, the woman likes a t certain type of um, physicality, but not intimacy. You know, mm -hmm. something rough, something you know. So if you grab her, she likes it. She's like, "Ooh, that feels good. I feel protected." But if he's mm -hmm. caressing her, she's like. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that is a, I would say that is a warped sense of touch because that's not intimate yeah. in any kind of way. That's a warped need to be touched in a certain type of way or grabbed in a certain type of way or handled because some women like to be handled and not touched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody touch you and you like, why are you why are you touching me like that? But if, if they like they if they grab you a little bit, that's normal or whatever. But if somebody just like touch you, like, ugh, like some stop. You get what I'm saying? So <laughs> sometimes certain types of touches are gross and certain type of touches are normal, you know. Mm -hmm. Just like me and a a, a friend of mine, right? I might be like, bro, what are you talking about? I might push him or something like that. But if I touch him, 
<laughs> like, yo, you gay or something? Like, what's wrong with you? So it's a certain level of touch that another person may be comfortable with. And if you touch them in a different way, it means something totally different. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. And I want to touch bases or two regarding when the, um, we were talking about if something is toxic or not. Um, the thing that I want to say about that is that it's not that the love language is toxic, kind of going back as somebody wants, you know, like more of something, like you say, there could have been trauma or something mm. in the background, but also it's an error in people's lives where there's parts of us that we haven't mastered. And that's for all of us. And like we're always striving to do and be better. And so let's say if I haven't mastered in having an understanding, like you were talking about, you know, somebody said, oh, well, you're not buying me anything. But if she has it mastered, like if your love language is something else and then to, to see the bigger pictures, like he's not able to buy that at this time, then mm -hmm. her love language is so strong where she hasn't been able to master certain parts of her being, certain parts of herself. It doesn't mean that the love language is wrong per se, but she hasn't, you know, again, just hasn't mastered, you know, like understanding, compassion and kindness and things like that in other areas in her life. And so it may, you know, it's almost kind of like that's where addiction and stuff kind of comes into play as well because mm -hmm. it kind of gets into... I guess you say certain parts of the brain. Um, one thing that I did I did like about you talking about the five love language that I heard you talk about in the past, you kind of talked about how it impacts the brain. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I'm glad you brought that up because um, some of the ways that a lot of our uh, needs or um, understanding of what we want can be warped, it comes from, it comes directly from trauma. So we have uh, something in our bodies called dopamine, okay? Mm -hmm. And dopamine is literally uh, feeling, it's, it's like a happy chemical, right? So um, when I'm about to eat some cake, or when I'm about to buy a new car, or I'm about to go out on a date with Beyonce, or something, right? Not, I know Beyonce is married, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I get a great feeling of dopamine, and I can't wait. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm about to do this great thing, right? Well, dopamine is meant to push us to want to do more because all those examples were I was about to do something. Mm -hmm. So dopamine comes even before the act actually happens right but sometimes a certain amount of trauma can affect the dopaminergic part of our brains where we get compulsive because it's just like any other situation say um you're, you're, you're driving a car and you run on a curve and now you bend the uh the axle a little bit of the car right so now as you're driving, since the axle is bent, which is the axle being bent is like your trauma. And now when you're driving, you see the car wants to go this way a little bit. Right. And when you let go of the steering wheel, the steering wheel turns this way and you start to go like this. Right. And you're just like, yo, what's going on? Because you don't know that your axle is actually bent when you ran over that curb. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing happens in your brain. Sometimes something can actually be bent and the way your dopamine is actually coming out is not enough dopamine. So you don't feel as excited as you would like to. And just like with a drug addict, you want to feel that high. See, the word dope comes from dopamine. You know, people who sell dope, who do whatever, use dope. That's yeah. dopamine. Dopamine is actually um, our own natural drug, right? So sometimes when there's a certain amount of trauma, we've been raped, we've been beat, 
you know, or we've been uh, isolated as a child, things like that, your dopaminergic, um, I would say, um, transmitters are not necessarily working properly. You know, because one part, there, there's something called a synaptic uh, membrane and dopamine comes out and there's another part this is called a synapse. Dopamine comes out of my fingers, right? And it goes into the, the other one, right? But sometimes something can be bent, just like the axle. So it's like this, right? So when a dopamine comes out, it doesn't go, they supposed to be like this. But since it's like this, the dopamine is taking a long time to get there, right? And when this happens, the person physically is like, I, I want more. I need more. So a woman wants rougher sex, you know, or the guy uh, wants to have sex more often. So he looks at porn all, all the time because he needs more. And the porn he looks at is like the crazy stuff because the normal stuff isn't enough. You know, he's looking for all these different things or it could be a lot of different situations where you, you crave more than usual, and it's because mentally your axle is bent. So you're, 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 you're leaning, you're biased towards something versus being in the middle. So it can be a dopamine problem, and this can be, this can be fixed through just, uh, just sitting down with someone and the person that would be best for this particular situation would be a cognitive behavioral therapist and not just a therapist. Because part of this has a lot to do with cognition and not just, hey, my mom did this. Hey, no, it, it's, it's more because something is bent in your brain and your cognitive skills are off. So a cognitive behavioral therapist is important to talk to and not just a therapist. Okay. And I'm glad you said that because my question was going to be, how can it be re reversed? So I'm glad you did point that out because people was probably wondering um, when it comes to that, you know, when it comes to that. And so in one sense, we would come across people, you know, um, one, if we come across someone and they're not interested in the five love language, my suggestion for people is they just may be the one that we just may not need to deal with that they're not interested because they're going to be some head buddies, <laughs> meaning that they're not going to be able to, you know, meet our needs because they may mm -hmm. want their needs met, but how they're going to meet, you know, your need when it comes to that. And then right. it's also good to be able to know that when people have trauma and different experiences in their lives, and especially, and I like the piece that you talked about our parents, because to be honest, I never, I mean, even though I know hmm. it impacts, but I never really thought about it in a love language sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I look at, uh -huh. you know, I'm doing my own internal stuff, and I look at, you know, like my parents, um, patterns and things like that, but not in a love language. And so I'll be exploring that a little bit more. And so, yeah, that is really good. And um, one thing I would tell everybody, you know, uh, definitely counseling is good, but a lot of the work that's going to be done is the work that we do ourselves. Because, like, my thing is when it comes to self-care is what we do now. It's what we do before, during, and after counseling. Because there's so many things that go on in our everyday life. You know, no one can be in a counseling chair every day. You know, and the more we know about ourselves, the better that we can, you know, contribute to the world, be good, you know, to ourselves and to our loved ones and everyone that we interact with. And I actually have a, a coaching group and I tell the ladies in my coaching group that um, I gave them homework to do and I wanted each one of them to write a letter to their mother. Okay, we got 15 seconds. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, overall, it opened up a lot once they got to the point where they actually started writing because they were able to feel and see how they felt. But I really appreciate this. This was awesome.